Digimon, the movie, part 10. That's a wrap. Ah, the last day. I think it might have been a Sunday, but I can't remember. Brain surgery. When we created the recording schedule, I did want to make sure that the last two actors we brought in were Wendy Lee and Michael Sorich. Now, Wendy was the very first voice director of Digimon, the TV show. So I thought it was only fitting that she be there when we crack the champagne in a sort of a gesture of look what became of what you helped create. We're now doing a movie. Isn't that fantastic? You know, so let's crack some champagne together. And Michael Sorich was her main backup along with Richard Epcar, who wasn't in Digimon the movie, unfortunately. So I just wanted to make sure that we were all there together in the room, you know. So Wendy was first, and then Sorich was right after her, and I asked him to show up about 10 minutes earlier, and which he did. And then when Wendy was done, we cracked the champagne, and uh, it was just, you know, a great little moment. I, I don't even remember if Wendy drinks. I know Wendy for a long time. My guess is she does not drink. Um, it was still, you know, she was there. And then I, I said, Bob, why don't you uh, take a turn directing? You you direct the storage, and I'm going to sip on some uh, bubbly. And so did Terry. And uh, we watched Bob uh, direct storage. And then afterwards, storage joined us. There was cake. There was cake in the conference room and more champagne and hugs and congrats and laughter all around. I'm sure I apologized to Terry at some point. <laughs> it was just a great memory. I thank the three people most responsible. One, of course, is Terry. She's the one who made me showrunner during season one. That's another story. And then uh, read a costume match cut. It was the first uh, producer of Digimon before Terry. She first brought me in to voice direct Digimon in the first place. And then finally, my dear friend Maureen Smith. She was president of Fox Family Worldwide. She was sitting next to me at that screening that uh, I told you the story about me and Boom Boom. And uh, she was my biggest cheerleader then. She's my biggest cheerleader now. And, you know, I knew Haim wasn't going to give me this movie, the reins of this movie, so to speak, without asking for her opinion. And her opinion meant a lot to Haim. So I'm sure it had a huge impact on him when he handed myself and Bob this huge project. And Haim and Maureen... Both had faith we deliver. And that's kind of what, you know, show running is. That's kind of what movie directing is. It's just delivering to the money people what you promise them, you know, a good product. So all the dialogue's recorded. Now we bring in all the audio elements together for the audio mix. And I heard the songs and I want to thank Ron Kanan, who was president of music at Saban. I was a bit of a pest to him. Sorry, Ron. And I kept, you know, asking him, this is what I want. I was just, you know, making sure everything was there. You know, I was, uh, I was, you know, just trying to bend the will of all these uh, departments to make one movie together. You know, I was just, you know, a pest. <laughs> we needed music. And he had a little uh, screening for me in, uh, in the music editor's room when it was all said and done for my approval. And I was blown away. I was like, I don't know if my pestering did this, but I was just blown away. I mean, they were big, popular songs of the day. Like, they were songs that were currently on the radio. It was crazy. It was a kick-ass soundtrack. And I was like, Ron, oh my God, thank you so much. This is beyond my expectations. I couldn't believe it. So the last thing we did while it was off being sound mixed and color corrected, we had the promo department make us a trailer for Digimon the movie. And we hired voice actor Jess Harnell, an old buddy of mine, to do the narration. He's a wild man. He's hilariously funny. Like, seriously, you're always, if you're not bending over laughing from one of his stories, uh, you haven't met him. He's just a walking good time, Jess. And he was great. And uh, he brought the kind of energy uh, I was looking for when I asked for him. But after I played it for the powers that be, they were like, yeah, it sounds like good for a TV show promo, but it doesn't sound like a big movie that's going to be playing on thousands of screens. So Fox decided to uh, pony up the bucks and pay the big man, the Jedi master of trailer narration. His nickname was the Voice of God, and his name was Don LaFontaine. 
Look him up if you don't know who he is. He recorded the VO for almost every movie trailer in Hollywood for 20 years. He is the voice of In a World. You know, he's that monster that people parody today. And it was just like amazing. And he comes in, he gets driven in a limo. He pulls up. I watched him pull up. And then he comes in, he records the trailer, takes him about five minutes. And that's it. He's done. And he gets paid huge bucks for that. He probably told his driver, you know, keep it running. And this won't take long. Keep it running. This won't take long. I sound more like the movie phone guy. Anyway, a fun little field trip story happened when we found out that our trailer would be attached to the new Pokemon movie, which was out that summer. So one day on a lunch break over in Westwood, a bunch of us go to uh, a movie theater to see it. And we actually literally just watched the trailer and then uh, left before Pokemon the movie. But... (laughs) But we still, you know, we got popcorn and we sat down. It was a fun little, you know, lunch trip. And, you know, the movie comes on. I mean, the trailers start and we're sitting there with popcorn and we watch the trailer. And I hear Don LaFontaine, the voice I've been hearing since probably Jaws in 1976 when I'm 10 years old. And I hear him say, an adventure too big for television. Digimon, the movie. And I get chills. And for the first time, I felt like, wow, I made a real movie in a theater with popcorn and everything. Digimon, the movie, part 12, the premiere. The premiere was fantastic. Josh Seth told me he got a limo. I didn't get no limo. But I still had a fantastic time. And it was on the 20th Century Fox lot. And it was just a really special day. Yes, it was day, not night. You know, kids movies. So kids don't go to nighttime premieres. They go to afternoon premieres. And I got my late buddy Kareem El Safi's brothers who are huge Digimon fans. And they were just loving it. And I got them for some free swag. And we took pictures together with Digimon characters walking around. And we get inside the theater and uh, and I'm looking for my seat. And... Uh, Swear to God, I think to this day, Paul St. Peter took my seat, but I'm looking around and uh, I'm looking for a seat and somewhere, where's my seat? And Terry and the cast, they all have their seats and no one saved a seat for Bob and me or our guests. And we're like, oh my God, we, no one saved our seats. So we're scrounging, you know, and we finally found like the very back row and we're in between the fans and we look around and we're like, you know what? This is perfect. This is much better. (laughs) One of the reasons is that the premiere, you never know if your friends and colleagues are there. They're laughing to be polite or, you know, are are they really laughing because they really think it's fun. But, you know, when you're with the fans, they're only going to laugh if, if it's funny. So the first part of the movie happens. People are loving this movie. The second part of the movie happens. People are loving this movie. The bomb falls in the bay. We say a joke and we go to black. People were applauding. They were loving it. And then suddenly they were getting out of their seats like they were getting up to go. I'm not kidding. They were actually standing to leave. And then on the screen comes up four years later. And the audience starts to sit back down again, confused. And I'm like, guys, 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 I know the movie feels over, but trust me, there's 20 more confusing minutes to watch. (sighs) Oh, well, it's still a movie. I'm not going to let it ruin the joy for me anymore. On the opening weekend of Digimon the Movie, Bob and I celebrated all weekend long with our friends and family. And we went to see it with a big group at with a paying audience in Burbank. And that was even more special to me at the premiere. I mean, when, when a person's actually paying money and they're laughing, you know without a doubt it's genuine. And that's a feeling that I wish for all comedy filmmakers. Digimon the Movie Part 13 The legacy? I think the jury's pretty much in at this point. Being associated with this film, even though I let most of the experience bother me, it's given me immeasurable opportunities. It gave me credibility within the entertainment industry that I had not achieved before that. 
even with an Emmy Award, which I had, it still wasn't writing a movie, being the voice director of an animated movie. And, you know, you look online today and people are still discovering it and writing reviews. It's 20 years after its release. There's tweets going on, that whole storyline of Ty's mom's cooking. It's got like over 40,000 likes. The film has a life of its own now, and I love it. It's fantastic that a film I made 20 years ago is still finding an audience. It's, some, it's a point of pride. What else can a filmmaker really ask for that your movie holds up for 20 years? Now, I'm not delusional to think that... <laughs> the story of this movie holds up for 20 minutes, let alone 20 years. <laughs> but the jokes still work and people still laugh at the gags and people still enjoy part one and part two. And there are quite a few out there who do enjoy part three. Hey, there's an audience for everyone out there. And this film keeps finding one. I can only hope that my first live action film that I did after my brain surgery, when I decided not to wait for life anymore, and I just went out and made a movie. I saw that with a live audience, too, before the pandemic. And I experienced that feeling all over again, 20 years later. I mean, if they're still talking about Famous in 20 years, I'll be thrilled. Hey, I'll be thrilled if I'm still alive in 20 years. By the way, it's about a washed-up voice director named Jeff Nimoy who succumbs to the pitfalls of a small-time celebrity at an anime convention. And if you want, check it out. It also stars Lex Lang, who plays Omnimon, among others, in Digimon the Movie, Brian Donovan, who plays Davis in Digimon the Movie, and Jeff Nimoy, who plays Tentomon, among others, in Digimon the Movie. And Floyd the Barber. Ah, Barney, because kids today are so smart, aren't they? That's right. We all play fictional versions of ourselves. No. So I'll tell you right now, it's not autobiographical. It's a romantic comedy set at an anime convention. So check it out if you get a chance. If you just go to jeffnemoy.com, it'll take you everywhere you want to go. Thanks so much for listening. Happy anniversary, Digimon the movie. Talk to you next time. <laughs> about NFL films. And that was 20 years ago, okay? Everyone I know there is gone. Or dead. And just go back to anime. You're a superstar in that world. Actor, writer, director. Jeff Nimoy. Mm, it's complicated. I'm with GeekCon. We were wondering if you'd like to be a VIP guest again. I don't really do anime conventions anymore. How does $3,000 sound? Wolfwood is definitely my favorite character of all time. When he died, I cried like a little baby. I cried too. When he died, I was out of a job. Is this pretty much the way you remember it? <sniffs> Smells the same. Jeff Nimoy! I'm your biggest fan. Oh, <laughs> you're right. Oh, she's being serious. How can you stay depressed around me? I guess I can't. Mm. I can't believe you won an Emmy in 1996. I wasn't even born yet. What? If I dressed like a priest and carried around a giant cross, it would kill my dead Jewish grandmother. At this convention, I'm famous and sexy. Back in LA, I'm George Costanza. Oh. I think I might be falling in love with him. Digi Armor Energize! Okay, you're my favorite. Arnold Schwarzenegger as a short order cook. That's right, put down the short ribs. What are you doing? <laughs> That's not barbecue sauce, it's blood. Here's to Adventures in Anime. Yeah. Yeah.